You've probably heard by now that the Angular team has released version 4 of their popular framework, but what does that actually mean? What's being changed? What happened to version 3? And is it going to be as much of a pain to update projects built in Angular 2 as it was updating from version 1? Luckily, the answer to the last question is no. Angular 2 was a complete rewrite of the core libraries, meaning apart from a few upgrade options, projects had to be largely rewritten. Updating from version 2 to version 4 and onwards, however, isn't as painful. From this point onward, I'll refer to version 1 as Angular 1 and Angular 2 and newer as just Angular to keep to the preferred naming convention. The purpose of the latest release was to start fulfilling the Google Teams commitment to make Angular apps smaller and faster by reducing the size of generated code by up to 60%. They also took animations out of core and into its own package to help create better documentation and auto-completion, as well as enhancing some template binding syntax that we'll look at in detail a little bit later on in the video. Finally, Angular was updated to a more recent version of TypeScript to improve the speed of the compiler and enable developers to get better type checking throughout their applications. So what happened to version 3? Back in September of 2016, when the first version of the new Angular framework was released, the team announced that they'll be switching to semantic versioning. As the name suggests, semantic versioning is all about adding some meaning to version numbers. A semantic version consists of three numbers, major, minor, and patch. A bump in the major version indicates there are breaking changes. A minor version bump tells us that new, non-breaking features have been added and the patch number is incremented to indicate bug fixes. Angular's core libraries live in one single Git repo hosted on GitHub, but are distributed as different NPM packages. For the most part, the versions of these packages were aligned, except for the router. After talking to developers at ng-conf 2016 about the design flaws prominent in the router, the team decided to deprecate version 2 of the package, favouring a rewrite that was then referred to as version 3. Due to this misalignment, the team decided to get everything back in line with version 4 and essentially start with a blank slate. So what features can we expect in the template binding syntax? First off, the ngif directive has been updated to include else statements. We're now also able to assign local variables in our templates, which is useful in cases such as when we're unrolling an observable. Let's look at some basic code to see how these new features could be used. In this example, we use an else statement in the ngif directive to show a loading indicator if the user list hasn't loaded yet. We also create a couple of local variables, one called users that references the user list, and another in the ng4 directive named count. These variables can be used anywhere in the template as long as they're in scope. So what's next? The Angular team has set out a tentative roadmap for the next 6 months that outlines a release schedule that's split up into 3 cycles. A new patch version of the framework is scheduled to be released each week, with minor updates being released on a quarterly basis, and finally a major release with easy to migrate breaking changes coming every 6 months. This means that with the release of version 4 in March of 2017, we can expect version 5 around September and so forth. So what does this all mean? First off, and most importantly, we shouldn't worry about version numbers anymore as updating applications to the latest release of Angular should be on the whole a pain-free experience. Open source development is hard. Technology is constantly improving and the community is only now just following suit, but the Angular team's move to embrace semantic versioning and evolve in a more transparent, predictable and incremental way is a shift in the right direction and enables us to avoid another Angular version 1 to version 2 situation again in the future. These are exciting times for us and hopefully I've managed to answer any lingering doubts you may have had about what a new version of Angular means for your project. Version 1 of Angular CLI has already been updated to generate new packages in Angular version 4, so go ahead and update your packages today and start benefiting from the performance and syntax updates.